Hello and welcome to Raju Notes channel, your pit stop for weekly current affairs updates. The updates tailor made for students taking all kinds of competitive exams like UPSC, civils, defense and placement interviews. Please subscribe to the channel and stay updated every Sunday. In a significant move, Supreme Court of India has upheld the validity of Centre's decision to abrogate Article 370 of the Constitution of India, which granted special status to the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. The Centre in 2019 scraped the Article 370 and split the state into two union territories, Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. The final verdict from the five-judge constitution bench led by Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachud comes in response to a bunch of petitions challenging the centre's move to abrogate Article 370 four years ago. The Apex Court said that Article 370 was a temporary provision brought for some specific purposes and there is no malafide in President's order abrogating it. Supreme Court said Jammu and Kashmir did not enjoy any sovereignty after it joined the Union of India. The Apex Court said Jammu and Kashmir does not have internal sovereignty different from other states. India hosted four days 27th WAIPA World Investment Summit Conference in New Delhi last week. National Investment Promotion and Facilitation Agency of the Government of India and World Association of Investment Promotion Agency organized the conference at the Indian International Convention and Expo Center Yashobhumi, New Delhi. Under the aegis of the Department of Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, it was the largest world investment conference ever. Union Minister of Commerce and Industry, Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution and Textiles, Piyush Goel launched the Experience of India Center EIC, showcasing the best of the India's offering across the services, technology and products through a variety of technologies, including virtual reality, augmented reality, interactive touchscreens and projection mapping. World Investment Conference is being held in India for the first time. Over 1,000 attendees, 50 investment promotion agencies and various multilateral agencies attended the conference. Members of the Polish Parliament backed Donald Tusk to become Poland's Prime Minister. Tusk returns nearly two months after a coalition of opposition parties led by him secured victory in the national election held in October this year. The incoming administration will be shown in at the presidential palace by President Adrezi Duda on 13 December. In Pakistan, 25 security personnel and 27 terrorists were killed in a separate clashes between the security forces and terrorists in Dera Ismail Khan district of Khyber Pakhtunwa. The terrorists attempted to enter the post by ramming an explosive-laden vehicle into it in a suicide bombing attack. The resulting blast led to the collapse of the building and casualties on the security forces side. A Pakistani Talibani group, Tehrike Jihad Pakistan, claimed the responsibility for the attack. In Dubai, nations reached for a landmark agreement on the UAE consensus that calls for transition away from the fossil fuels to achieve net zero by 2050. The 28th conference of the parties, that is COP28, has come to a historic close, making a turning point in the global efforts to combat climate changes. 198 participating parties outlined an ambitious climate agenda aimed to keeping the goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 degree within the reach. The COP28 UAE Declaration on the Climate and Health, endorsed by 144 countries, accelerates the development of climate resilience, sustainable and equitable health systems. As COP28 concludes, the focus now shifts to ensuring the agreements are implemented and followed through COP29 and COP30. Researchers at Western Sydney University have announced Deep South a supercomputer capable of simulating networks at the scale of human brain. Deep South uses a neuromorphic system which mimics biological processes using hardware to efficiently emulate large networks of spiking neurons at 228 trillion synaptic operations per second. Deep South aims to be operational by April 2024.
The government's Indian Computer Emergency Response Team, CRED, has issued a high severity warning for Samsung products in India. The vulnerabilities could allow an attacker to bypass implemented security restrictions, access sensitive information and execute arbitrary code on the targeted system. The warning said, apply appropriate security updates as mentioned by the vendor, the government advised people. In Sri Lanka, three Indian Armed Forces officers were awarded the prestigious Golden Owl Award by Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe at the graduation ceremony held last week. The officers were undergoing command and staff course at Sri Lanka's Defence Service Command and Staff College at Colombo. The officers wing commander Sumit Mahajan, Major Rohit and Lieutenant Commander Sunny Sharma received the award for standing first amongst the foreign student officers. Sultan of Oman arrived in New Delhi this week on a three-day visit to India. He was accompanied by a high-level delegation including senior ministers and officials. He held bilateral meetings with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. External Affairs Minister said, The first state visit of Sultan Haitham bin Tariq marks a significant milestone in the diplomatic relations between India and Oman. Sultan Tariq was given a ceremonial welcome at Rashtrapati Bhavan where he met President Draupadi Murmu and Vice President Jagdeep Tankar. India United States anti money laundering and countering the financing of terrorism dialogue was held in New Delhi to address the elite finance risk across the both countries. The meeting was held last week between Revenue Secretary Sanjay Malhotra and the US Treasury Under Secretary for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence Brian Nelson. In a joint statement, both the sides said that the dialogue is an effective forum for India and the US to share perspective and best practices in addressing elite finance risk in the international financial system. The statement informed that India and the US have agreed to pursue opportunities to enhance coordination and cooperation bilaterally and multilaterally within the Financial Action Task Force. INS Tarmugli, a fast attack craft, has been commissioned into Navy at a ceremony held at Naval Dockyard Vishakapatnam last week. Vice Admiral Sandeep Naithani, AVSM, VSM, Chief of Material, Indian Navy, commissioned the Trinket class FAC, which was gifted to Maldivian Naval Defence Forces in 2006 by India. The ship returned in May this year and post extensive restoration work by the Naval Dockyard Vishakapatnam, it was reincarnated as its present avatar. The warship is fitted with advanced MTU engines water jet propulsion, latest communication equipment, a 30mm gun and an advanced radar system and will be extensively used for coastal surveillance and protection of our ODAs in the KG Basin area and along the east coast of India. Named after a picturesque island in the Andaman groups, the 320-ton INS Tarmugli, measuring 48 meters in length, can achieve speeds in excess of 30 knots. Iran has decided to unilaterally cancel visa requirements for visitors from 33 more countries including India. The list also includes Russia, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Japan and UAE. The decision is aimed at boosting tourist arrival and attracting more visitors from the countries around the world. Iranian Minister of Culture, Heritage, Tourism, Handicrafts, Azotullah Zarghamai said, efforts to boost tourism can neutralize Iranophobia campaigns. As a result of decision, People of 45 countries or territories will be able to visit Iran without any visa now. Defence Research and Development Organisation India has successfully carried out a flight trials of Autonomous Flying Wing Technology Demonstrator, an indigenous high-speed flying wing UAV in Karnataka's Chitradurga. The aircraft prototype with a complex arrowhead wing platform is manufactured with lightweight carbon pre-preg composite material. The composite structure is impregnated with fiber interrogators which can monitor the aircraft's health. What is the 10,000-year clock being built by Jeff Bezos for 350 crores? 
Billionaire Jeff Bezos is building a 10,000-year clock located inside a Texas mountain for 350 crores. Based on inventor Danny Hilly's idea, the 500 feet tall clock symbolizes long-term thinking. The mechanical clock is designed to last for 10,000 years with no human intervention. It ticks once a year, chimes every 100 years, and cuckoo comes out once a millennium. The Indian Navy responded swiftly to a maritime incident in the Arabian Sea involving hijacking of a Malta-flagged vessel MV Ruin. The vessel, with 18 crew on board, had sent a Mayday message on December 14th. Indian Navy diverted its naval maritime patrol aircraft and its warship on the anti-piracy patrol in the Gulf Aden to locate and assist MV Ruin. And now for the segment where we see the events that unfolded itself this week back in history. 10th December 1768 Encyclopedia Britannica first published The first part of the first edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica, the oldest continuously published and revised work in the English language was published and advertised for sale in Edinburgh on this day in 1768 11th December 1936 Abdication of King Edward VIII Edward VIII, failing to win acceptance for his desire to marry American divorcee Wallace Varifil Simpson, became the only British sovereign to voluntarily resign the crown. His abdication formally approved this day in 1936. 12 December 2000 US Supreme Court decision on the presidential election on this day in 2000, the US Supreme Court effectively awarded the presidency to George W. Bush, ruling that a fair recount of ballots in Florida could not be performed by the deadline for certifying the state electors. 13 December 1642 New Zealand cited on this day in 1642, Dutch navigator Abel Tasman sighted South Island, New Zealand and later mistaking the strait north of the island for a bay, believed he had found the west coast of hypothetical southern continent. 14 December 1911 Roald Amundsen's arrival at the South Pole one of the greatest figures in the history of polar exploration was Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen, who left Norway for Antarctica in June 1910 and on this day in 1911 became the first person to reach the South Pole. 15 December 1939 Premiere of Gone with the Wind Starring Vivian Leigh Clark Gabel, the film Gone with the Wind, a romantic tale of the American South during the Civil War adapted from the 1936 novel by Margaret Michelle, premiered this day in Atlanta, Georgia in 1939. Vijay Divas commemorates and celebrates the victory of the Indian Armed Forces in Operation Vijay against the infiltrating Pakistani troops. Rich tributes are given to martyrs who put their lives on line during the war. Since India and Pakistan partition in year 1947, there has always been animosity between the two countries for many reasons. One of these reasons was with regards to East Pakistan. The events leading to 1971 war were what promoted the Indian troops to get involved. Non-Muslims residing in the West Pakistan were being targeted and required intervention. The war between Pakistan and India lasted for 13 days, ending on December 16, 1971, and resulting in the liberation of the new country by the name of Bangladesh. It was India's front which made nearly 93,000 Pakistani soldiers surrender and altered the contours of the map of the world. Well, that's all friends for this week's updates. See you soon next Sunday on the same channel. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.